Hello everyone. Uh, as you remember, uh, we said that for studying and analyzing the dynamic system, we need to find a mathematical model of such systems. And we said that because during this course, uh, we deal with the linear control systems, so we said that to find the mathematical modeling of a system, we can obtain a transfer function of uh, such control systems. Today, I'm going to show you how can we obtain the transfer function of a control system and also find a Laplace transform of functions in MATLAB. Let's continue in MATLAB and I will show you how can we do it in a MATLAB environment. Okay, as I said, today I'm going to find the cascaded parallel and feedback or closed loop control system transfer functions in MATLAB. For this reason, suppose that we have G1 of S like that and G2 of S like that. This is our cascaded system, parallel system and closed loop system. Okay, let's do it and find the transfer functions of this system in MATLAB. Okay, let's start in MATLAB. For this reason, I open the script in MATLAB. For start the coding, first of all, I write clear and CLC, then I need to define G1 of S. Define G1 of S. For this reason, I have to define the coefficient of nominator of G1, 10, and also coefficient of denominator of G1, like that, as you see here. So similarly, I have to define G2 of S. Again, the coefficient of nominator 5 and denominator is 1 and 5. Okay. Now, for obtaining the cascaded transfer function, transfer function, I need to use a series function like that. First of all, the output, I need the nominator and denominator of transfer function. For this reason, I write series like that, num1, then 1, num2, and then 2. Okay? then I need to print the system, print the nominator and denominator of the, the system. Actually, this is my cascaded transfer function. Okay, let's run it and see the result. Yes, as you see here, this is the transfer function of 
cascade system. Okay, let's continue. For the second system, we need to obtain the parallel transfer function. Again, same as the previous one, I need the nomin nominator and denominator of transfer function as an output so I use the parallel function again for num1 denominator 1 nominator 2 and denominator 2 okay again I print it nominator and denominator and this is my parallel transfer function okay again I run it and we can see the parallel transfer function like that and for the closed loop control system similarly transfer function I need denominator and denominator of transfer function as a as an output and use feedback function num1 then 1 num2 and then 2 again print it num 10 and I display it as a closed loop transfer function okay run it and you can see the cascade transfer function, parallel transfer function, and closed loop transfer function. Okay, after talking about the transfer functions in the pre previous lessons, uh, we investigated the Laplace transform and inverse Laplace transfer, and we saw that uh, this transform is so important and we use actually it in analyzing the control system so as you see here we have four functions e to the power of bt times cosine of a t plus c as a first function and x2 of t is t times cosine of wt and the third function is the impulse signal and the fourth function x4 of t is the step function I want to obtain the Laplace transform of these functions in MATLAB and here as you see I have two different function in S domain 
So I would like to find the inverse Laplace transform of these functions. Actually, I want the time dom find the time domain of these two functions in MATLAB. Let's do it. Okay, same as the previous one. I start my program with clear and CLC commands. So now I have to define the functions, these four functions that I want to take the Laplace transform. For this reason, I need to define the functions in a symbolic form. So I need to define S, T, A, B, and C uh, as symbolic variables. Now I can define the first function like that x1 is equal to exp e times t times cosine of a times t plus c okay this is my first function now for taking the laplace from this function I need to use Laplace function x1 okay so now I run it And as you see here, I could find the Laplace transform of the first function. Okay, let's continue. For the second one, similarly, I define the second function e times cosine of omega times but as you see here I use the new variable called W and I don't have this variable here so I need to define the W as a symbolic, uh, symbolic variable so again I can use the Laplace function like that now again I run it and here you can see the Laplace transform of the second function okay For the third one, actually, I had the impulse and step functions. So I can write the Laplace function like that for the impulse response. For the impulse function, I use the Dirac function, as you see here, and for the step function, I use the heavy side of T. As a step function okay 
Now, as you see here, I can define the functions inside of the Laplace and also I can define the function separately then use the x1 both of them are correct let's run yes as you see here again the Laplace transform of step function is 1 by s and Laplace transform of impulse function is 1. Okay, now let's talk about the inverse Laplace transform. Again, clear and CLC. Now, because I need to define my functions in symbolic form, I use sims s, t, and a. So, for the first, first function, I use i Laplace and define the function inside of this function. 1 divided by s minus a to the power of 2. So I use pretty x1 and for the second function again I use the i Laplace s divided by s to the power of 2 plus 1. Again, pretty x2. Now we can see the result. Okay? As you see here, the inverse Laplace transform of the first system is like that, t times exp to the power of a times t, and the second one is cosine of t. So we see that using i Laplace, as you see here, we can find the inverse Laplace transform of systems, actually transfer function of the systems. Okay, for the last part of this section, I would like to show you how can we expand a transfer function into its partial fractions in MATLAB. As you see here, we have two different transfer functions, x1 and x2. So I want to expand these two transfer functions uh, into their partial fraction. Let's do, let's do it and find the partial fractions of these systems. Okay? Let's start with clear and CLC. After that, again, I define the nominator of first transfer function, actually the coefficient, coefficients of nominator phi, 3 and 6 and denominator is 1 3 7 0 and 12 okay for this reason i need three 
different outputs and use the function residue nominator and denominator okay now we can run this code and as you see here I can expand these transfer function into its partial fractions these are my zeros and these are my poles and this is a constant term in transfer function okay as a second one similarly I need to define the transfer function actually I need to find the coefficients of nominator and the coefficients of denominator for this reason I use num and I need to multiply the two terms of the nominator together to find the coefficients of nominator. For this reason, I need to function conv. So I define the coefficients of the first term and coefficients of the second term like that and again for the denominator I can use the same function and defining the coefficients of term 1 and term 2 like that Okay, now similarly, R, P, and K is equal to residue of num then. Okay, we can see the result. Yes, as you see here, again, we could find the R, P, and K for the second transfer function. Okay, I hope it would be helpful for you. Thank you and goodbye.